When one or more electrical components in your car suddenly stop working, of course, the first thing you want to do is check your fuses. And so as a case with this W124 Mercedes, you know, I pulled the cover off and right away I can see, here it is, fuse C, a red fuse, is badly burnt out. I just scan the other fuses, they look okay, although I see some corrosion on some of these older fuses. But this is the one I'm worried about. So I'm gonna pull this out and replace the fuse. That's the first thing, you know, just, okay, let's replace the fuse. There's times that these fuses, because of their age, they can get a momentary overload and burn out, and you may not really have a problem. So we wanna check that first. Now let's take a closer look at this fuse here. You can see it's pretty well disintegrated, but it also looks very aged. So I'm gonna grab a new fuse. Now this is where I need to warn you. If this is a direct short, you're gonna get a very hot spark. And in fact, if you try to put the fuse in by hand without gloves, you actually may get burned. You won't get shocked, but you might get burned so I always recommend using a pair of pliers. This is a custom set of pliers that I make here in my shop. Now I'm just gonna roll this in very carefully. Look at that. It immediately blew with a loud snapping sound. From my experience, when you get that really rapid burnout of the fuse and the loud popping noise, it's usually going to be a direct short to ground, but you can't assume anything. Remember, when you're troubleshooting electrical, gremlins don't assume anything. So the next step is to look at which fuse this is, check the chart, and see which electrical components in the car are controlled by this fuse. This is fuse C. So I'm gonna check the chart here, fuse C, rear roof light, trunk light, rear door locking system, safety belt, hand over arm, seat back arrestor, central locking system, door lights, reading lamps, and the antenna. And that's exactly what happened on this car. Suddenly the dome lights weren't working, the radio wasn't working, <laughs> my uh, seat belt arresters weren't coming out, and I knew that I probably <laughs> was gonna have to do some real troubleshooting because when this happens, it's like, uh-oh, you know. <laughs> Especially troubleshooting direct shorts. If you've got a battery drain where it's just draining the battery down, it's usually a component and you can isolate it very quickly. But a direct short that burns out a fuse with a loud snap can be very challenging. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go through the car and I'm going to unhook or unplug one of these items at a time and then make sure the fuse isn't still blowing. Now you can go through a lot of fuses doing this test, I'm going to show you a little trick here you can use when you're troubleshooting and pulling wiring or plugs off components as I go around the car. From experience, I know that the automatic antenna can be a problem. I know that the dome lights or the trunk light can often be a problem. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back there and start in the trunk and I'm going to unplug those items and then I'll work around the car until I've unplugged everything here and let's see if we can find that short. To save time and to save fuses while I'm going through these tests, I went and pulled out one of my extra headlights here and the headlight plug, and I'm gonna take the low beam and I'm gonna hook one side of that low beam to the positive post on the battery. And then you can see I've got a jumper clip. Now I'm gonna take my jumper wire and go over to the load side of fuse C, which is the top prong. That makes it very convenient. I'm gonna clip this on that prong and look what happens. The headlight lights up. Now you can ponder that. I'm not gonna go through all the theory of why this works, but the headlight itself provides just the right amount of resistance and what's happening, you're powering from the battery and because the short is going to ground, it's going to light up the headlight. And how bright the headlight lights up can give you an idea just how severe the short is. You can look at the headlight. I'm gonna go back and quickly unplug the trunk light and I'm gonna pull the power antenna. Let's see if the light goes out. As soon as I find the short and unplug it or fix it, the light should go out. Okay, we're gonna pull this little 
light bulb out. I've dropped the trunk light down. What's nice about the headlight is I don't have to go up uh, to the front of the car. I can look at the ceiling here and I can see that headlight still on. Okay, now I'm gonna pull back this inner fender panel and reach up in there. And I'm gonna pull the plug to the power antenna. Okay, plug is pulled. Light still on? Yep, I'm looking up at the ceiling. That headlight's still on. No success there, but earlier today I went through all of those, almost all of them, okay, and uh, when I was looking around, I saw something I didn't like, and I'm going to show you what that is right now. When I pulled out these interior light door switches, look what I found right here. <laughs> a splice connector. That is not factory, so that means somebody's been in here messing with the wiring in this W124, and then looking right over here, what do you think that is? That's not factory either. That's a light for an aftermarket car alarm. So I'm gonna stop, I'm not gonna do anything else until I get under the dash and check that car alarm out. I've seen some real hatchet jobs in the past with aftermarket car alarms, so I wanna get that out of the car right away. I got on my knees and got under the dash here and pulled that under dash panel. <laughs> you can't believe <laughs> what I found. <laughs> like a rat's nest of wiring. So I cut all the zip ties, you know, and pulled this thing down. Look at this. All right. And what was really kind of shocking was these two power leads into this aftermarket car alarm were spliced, not even soldered. The wire was cut, they were just wrapped around on the power feed wire coming from Fuse C. I don't have any use for this car alarm. It's coming out. I can leave some of the wiring in there. So when you look at this, you just kind of shake your head. I'm gonna show you this up close. So take a look, isn't that impressive? Talk about high quality wiring. <laughs> Like I said, they didn't even have these connectors uh, to the factory wires even soldered. They were just stripped back and wrapped around and tape everywhere. Let's see what happens now. Just with this cut out, let's go back and do that headlight test and see if we still have a short on Fuse C. The moment of reckoning has arrived. Touching this jumper from the headlight does not make that headlight come on. Well, I'll be, look at that. Now I'm safe to install this new fuse. Okay, there it is. It's not blowing. <laughs> oh, success. Now this one was pretty simple. The moral of the story is watch out for aftermarket wiring in your car. While I'm wrapping this up, I want to also caution you about these old fuses. Look at these fuses. They're all corroded. You know, you've seen my other videos on these fuse box upgrades. But you have to be real careful. You may look at a fuse. I'm looking at this one. And it looks okay initially, but you get close and the head has fallen off. Let's look at this. See this? The head's falling off, so it's not making contact. So this is what happens with these old aluminum fuses. You know, just get rid of them. They may look okay, so what I'm going to do now is take all these fuses out and replace them all with copper alloy fuses before I put the cover back on. Having this fuse box surface tool actually makes this job so much more pleasurable as opposed to, you know, <laughs> trying to use your fingers or some other pair of pliers and having these things fly out all over the place. But these just snap right into place. And once you get them in, I'll show you something you want to be sure and do because they needed to be seated by hand. If you look closely, this one's a little crooked. So what I do is I take and rotate them like this. See, if they're not seated properly, they'll snap in. And by rotating them, you'll clean any potential corrosion that's left down on those fuse box terminals. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these. We've solved the short problem, and now I'm ready to go cruising. And sure enough, I got in the car. Whoa, the radio works, the antenna works, the 
dome lights work. So you can tell I'm pretty happy about fixing this problem.